what's up coaster community you guys are all happy now all your problems are fixed be happy live a great life because i just brought my intro back but today we are going to be using the magical power of time traveling to the future and we're going to be looking at all the new coasters that are going to be opening up next year and i'm going to be counting you guys down my most anticipated coasters of next year not the best because I, I have no clue i mean i'm not like some crazy scientist person that knows exactly what's going to be the best coaster or whatever so it's just what i'm most excited for and no relocated coasters because those aren't new coasters and some of you guys get really mad at my videos mainly because of my channel name you know it's a very controversial topic but here I get to express my opinions. Basically, that lets me grow brain cells and fight people about what I think is right and what they think is right. So yeah, you can fight me. Um, if you disagree, just just one v one me in Pokemon, and whoever wins. I mean, if I win, I'll I'll make Onion a hyper, or it already is. So yeah, it, that doesn't matter. But anyways, I'm gonna be counting down my top 25 most anticipated coasters not 10 25 because this video has to be two hours long but anyways let's just roll into the video god that was not okay rolling into the video god what is wrong with me anyways number 25 we have a vacoma suspended family coaster coming to uh, i'm too lazy to even say that this park's name so, some park in France is getting a Vacoma suspended family coaster. Same same layout as Dragonflyer and the one at Energy Landia. That's how you know if a coaster is good. If Energy Landia has it, it's instantly good because they're the best park and they eat credits. But these are actually good rides. Pretty good paced, uh, pretty intense, and they're just really fun family coasters. I don't care that you know there's extreme coasters that you know coasters people call extreme that aren't as high as this because. They're not on this list because this coaster is a good coaster from my experience. So yeah, that's why it's going to be taking the number 25 spot. Moving on to number 24, we have one or two coasters that I'm actually going to ride next year if I'm still hungry for credits. Hopefully, I am. But this is going to be the new SNS free spin coming to Kings Dominion. We did it. Six Flags has officially taken over the entire planet Earth with 40 free spins. Cedar Fair has been invaded by Six Flags. Let's go. The one thing that makes me not happy about this coaster is its theming. See, it's going in the jungle, safari, African theme, whatever section of the park. And they're supposed to have, you know, like race cars and avalanches and, you know, spaceships. But now we're getting a jungle. Like, why is this coming here? But anyways, I think free spins are pretty good rides if they actually decide to flip i don't think this one will so that's why it's last but still a nice addition for the park that i'm excited to ride next year uh hopefully and i, I think free spins are underrated that's why they have their own wrap go check that out because they definitely deserve it because they're they're very good rides in my opinion at number 23 we got dragon slayer at adventureland Someone slayed Dragon, their old looping coaster, so now we have a free spin. Thanks to Mr. Six himself, the the free spin apocalypse has is continuing. Pretty much similar ride to the one at King's Dominion. However, I think this one will probably flip more just because it's not at Cedar Fair. and I mean, Cedar Fair builds gigas that are 287 feet tall, so... You know, they just, they just don't really try. I mean, they all they had is B&Ms. But yeah, 40 free spins. Awesome. Great rides. Airtime Mike's favorite rides. They're amazing. You know, Mr. Six's favorite too. So yeah, it's going to be a great addition for the park. The best free spin coming in 2021 takes the number 22 spot. It's John Wick's open contract. See... Free spins have taken over the world so much that, you know, John Wick even got his own free spin. But we don't know if this would be the best free spin yet. That's definitely up in the air. It's got some nice theming. 
It really depends for me because I don't care about theming. How many times it actually flips. If it flips a lot, that's going to be good. If it doesn't flip, then that's not going to be good. But because we don't know how much they're going to flip, I'm just going to say this is probably the best because it's it's got theming, which is cool. Um, but I don't really care about theming that much, so that's why it's it's back-to-back -back with all the other free spins. But yeah, definitely a nice addition um, going to Motion Gate in Dubai. Uh, and I think it will be a great fit. At the park, I mean, all free spins are great fits at their parks, so you can't really go wrong with a free spin. Coming in at the number 21 spot, we have the Intimate Impulse Coaster coming to Chongqing Wanda Theme Park in China. This is going to be Intamin's first Impulse Coaster in 17 years. It's going to have the new track. Hopefully it has the new trains too with, with lap bars. That would, that would be sick. These Impulse Coasters from Experience on Wicked Twister, pretty underrated rides. They have pretty good launches, and these bikes are fun. They got some nice hang time, and they're, they're just fun overall. You know, these are not the best rides out there, but they are uh, fun rides, and I wouldn't mind to see uh, lots of these go to parks, and it's nice to see their uh, revival. At the number 20 spot, we have Emperor at SeaWorld Orlando. This is going to be the B&M dive coaster coming to the park in 2021 and even though it's smaller than most other b&m dive coasters it's one of the best in my opinion it looks like one of the best because it's got really good elements definitely very modern elements you got you know all different kinds of like zero g rolls immelmans corkscrews uh, all this all this really good stuff uh just a really good layout for a dive coaster and dive coasters really aren't my thing anyways but this one has the best layout so it doesn't have the best layout. It is one of the best layouts out of the dive coasters. So that's why I think it's going to be one of the best dive coasters. Like I said, I'm not really the biggest fan of dive coasters. So that's why it's not going to be higher. But it's still going to be a nice uh, addition for the park. Still going to be a nice, uh, fun ride. Probably going to be the park's best ride uh, as well. That's This and Electric Eel are going to be uh, two, two of the best rides at the park. So it's nice to see this park getting a, a big headlining attraction. Coming in at the number 19 spot, we have Monster at Gronalund, a B&M invert. It's probably going to be B&M's last time building a compact coaster because the supports are very weird and B&M doesn't like weird things. So yeah, but this looks like a really good ride. It has vests, which apparently suck and kill everything for some reason to every other enthusiast besides me. And it also is small, but it's got some nice uh, inversions, you know, definitely modern B&M elements, very twisty, twisty elements and inversions. So yeah, not the biggest or most intense B&M invert, but it's got some nice, fun-looking inversions, which is going to definitely make it a, a good ride that uh, definitely is going to be the headline attraction of this park. Coming in at number 18, we have a random B&M wing coaster opening up at Fantasy Valley in China next year. We literally know nothing about this ride, so I'm just guessing about how good it's going to be. And I like being on wing coasters. People say they're they're forceless, but they're they're still they're still roller coasters. They're they're fun rides still. Uh, on like, I mean, they have some force. Look at rides like Nitro, but they are good rides. Uh, this probably is going to be an, a, a nice coaster for sure. It'll be, it's going to be cool to see what the layout is. And you know, even though I'm probably never going to get to ride this coaster, it's still going to be a nice addition for uh, this park. It's going to be a great coaster for sure. It's going to have some probably some nice uh, inversions. So, yep, that's why it's going to be coming in at the number 18 spot. Coming in at the number 17 spot, we have unnamed blue fire clone coming to latte's magic forest in south korea this is going to be your standard blue fire clone where the fire isn't the right color so i don't know how this coaster is going to exist but it's still going to be a nice ride i've heard that these mac blue fire coasters aren't really the most intense but they still seem to provide some nice forces um throughout and seem to be pretty fun launch coasters in general, but nothing too special. 
So that's why it's not going to be higher on the list. But definitely going to be a nice launch coaster. Definitely wouldn't mind seeing any park get one of these rides. Coming in at the number 16 spot, we got Steel Typen at Dream World in Australia. Australia is really going off and Dream World included. They're getting a Mac Blue Fire clone, but it's not going to be a clone. I totally, I just lied to you there. It's actually going to have a spinning back car because Australia is addicted to their weird back cars like on DC Rivals with the, the negative two Gs on the non-averting loop backwards in the back car. And now Leviathan, another coaster opening in 2021, which I'm going to get to later, has the same thing. And this has got a spinning car, so that's going to be really cool. Probably won't spin too much, but still it's going to add to the experience. And the coaster is also going to have a forwards, backwards, forwards launch section, which is going to be really cool uh, as well. But it made the launch acceleration even worse. Now it's the launch three times. So good job, Mac. Now you have set the record yet again for the slowest launch acceleration. But this is still going to be a really good ride. Got the nice, you know, same old blue fire uh, layout, but you got the spinning car, which is going to uh, definitely make the experience uh, nice. Nice little, uh, you know, quirk in the back uh, if you're sitting in that row. So that's why I'm going to rank this coaster one spot higher than the other uh, Blue Fire clone. It's definitely going to be a nice addition to the park. Their standout coaster for sure. Coming in at the number 15 spot, we have Decepticoaster coming to Universal Studios Beijing. Hulk, he, he, he transformed. He, he switched species. Now he's a robot. So he's capable of giving himself vest restraints and a worse transitions. But this coaster is going to be a clone of Hulk at Universal Studios Islands of Adventure, which I find to be a pretty underrated ride. Really intense first inversion, really whippy. Uh, snaps, your, snaps your neck off, and the launch before that's pretty good. Really good pacing for a B&M. And really intense inversions for the entire ride. Got some, you know, nice intense and whippy inversions uh, throughout the, the rest of the layout as well. However, I don't think this is going to be quite as good because of the transitions being a bit more drawn out from what it seems like. Which is the main thing I like with Hulk is how whippy they are. But it's still going to be a nice coaster. I know that, you know, Hulk is, is a really good ride. So anything remotely close to that is going to be uh, a nice ride. And it's, it's definitely going to be nice to see uh, another version of this ride uh, open because it's a really solid B&M looper for sure. Coming in at the number 14 spot, we have Big Dipper coming to Luna Park, the RMC single rail Raptor coaster. Oh, wait, it's an, it's an Intamin. I, that's it. I'm done. I, I, I cannot stand this anymore. I am reporting Intamin for copyright. They are just not allowed to do this. It's a complete ripoff. I hate this. People really need to stop complaining about these rides that Intamin is creating and all manufacturers are creating because they are very good rides. They're not ripoffs. And I think that this is going to be a great ride for sure. I think it's going to definitely compete with the RMC Raptors very well. Even though it's not really a full scale coaster yet, you know, we haven't really seen the full potential to hot racer i still think this is really good for a prototype and they had some really tight restrictions but they did the best they could i think it has a really solid layout with great pacing and all sorts of uh forces and elements so yeah it's not going to be the best coaster opening next year but it's you know a very it's a new concept and i can't uh, wait for the you know the potential that this has the the new rides uh, the new hot racers after this that are going to open up and be even better. And this ride itself does look like a, a really good ride. Definitely excited for it. Coming in at the number 13 spot, we have Icebreaker at SeaWorld Orlando. You know, I just love my icebreakers. There was one video that I made where I chewed 25 pieces of icebreakers gum and my mouth does not want to taste those gum pieces ever again it was it was a lot but this coaster i like even more 
I'm really excited for Icebreaker. I think it is an extremely underrated coaster. Some people might call it a family coaster, but it is an ejector airtime machine to me. It's just got a, an amazing layout. Premier just got a new layout designer not that long ago, and his layouts are absolutely amazing. Filled with ejector, uh, really good elements, transitions, amazing pacing. And yeah, this coaster might be smaller, but it looks like it's going to be the best coaster in the entire park for me. And it's it's going to rival some of the you know bigger coasters opening in 2021. That just goes to show you how much how good this coaster is. And it's opening in a year with really good coasters. And it can compete with that. This coaster is just amazing. Can't wait to ride it. Coming in at the number 12 spot, we have a new launch coaster coming to Suzhou Paradise in China. This is going to be a giant Mac launch coaster. It's going to be Mac's biggest coaster ever. It's going to be 203 feet tall. This is going to be a big ride. And it's got some huge, intense inversions and some nice speed hills. It's got a really good combo of forces. It's got some nice pacing, really good layout. And overall, it looks like it's going to be uh, one of the better Mac launch coasters out there. It just looks like a really good ride for sure that I definitely uh, would want to see coming to more parks. Uh, hopefully, you know, a ride like this comes to America too because... It has a really good layout, and these Mac launch coasters, uh, they can be some really good rides, and this one's definitely a great example of that. Coming in at number 11, we have Leviathan at SeaWorld Orlando. Not a B&M Giga, but an even better model, a Gravity Group wood coaster. I really love these now after Voyage and Ravine Flyer 2. These are just amazing rides really good layouts they have some they have a ton of airtime really good pacing and leviathan seems like no exception to that seems like it's even though it's a shorter ride it's got a jam-packed layout probably is going to provide some nice uh floater to flow jector uh airtime and it is a long ride it's just everything you want in a modern wooden coaster and it's unfortunately it's going to be just missing the top 10 but it's going to be one of the best years for coasters ever the best. It's definitely going to be the best. I just spoiled that for you right there. So yeah, it makes sense that this coaster you know, won't be able to make the list, but that just shows you how good this year is and how good this coaster is. It's definitely going to be a really good coaster for the park. Going to be their headlining coaster for sure as well. Kicking off the top 10, we have an unknown wooden coaster coming to Bollywood Parks Dubai in 2021, obviously. It seems like this is going to be a GCI wood coaster, and it looks like it's going to be a very big and long ride. Having ridden a bunch of GCIs myself, I can tell you they have really good layouts, great transitions, and they're very fast-paced, dynamic, and long rides. And It's everything you want in a traditional wood coaster. GCI just delivers with it. Hopefully, this is uh, no exception. It seems like it's going to be one of their best coasters but we're just gonna have to wait and see what the actual layout of this coaster is but it's definitely gonna be a really good ride uh, for sure and hopefully we can get more details on this coaster uh, as well because it might shape up to be uh, one of the best wooden coasters out there if GCI plays their cards right and it's got a really uh, good and dynamic layout coming in at number nine we have Velocicoaster at Universal Studios Islands of Adventure. Now, before you go spamming in the comments saying I'm like GP or something, I'm just not the biggest fan of this coaster. Uh, there's there's lots of people that think it's going to be the best in the world because it combines theming and thrills, and it is a great coaster at combining theming and thrills, in my opinion. But just doesn't seem to be the most intense coaster out there. With that said, though, it has a it still has a very good layout. Seems like it's going to be pretty fast-paced, especially in the second half. And it's got some really good modern intimate elements like that zero-g stall, that wave turn, and the heartland roll over the water. Like I said, it's just not as high because it doesn't have, you know, it's not the most intense ride um, out there. Intamin definitely has more intense rides, but it really just comes down to what you prefer. I can definitely see if you really love this ride. For me personally, just not my type of ride, but definitely still a really good ride. Still a top-honored ride for sure. And in any other year, it would be much higher. But there's just so many good rides 
this year that I, I had to leave Mr. Dino out of the top eight because it's number nine. Coming in at number eight, we have the second ever Mac Extreme Spinning Coaster. The first one was Time Traveler, and this one is still Time Traveler because they couldn't think of any other names. But this is going to be a great coaster, and it's going to be great for the area, Belgium. And it's not even going to be their, uh, this is not even going to be their only coaster on the list. There's another coaster on this list from the same country. But this park is definitely going to have a great headlining coaster with this. This is going to give their lineup a facelift. Time Traveler had, a, you know, the spinning was really fun, but the layout really wasn't that good. This ride's going to fix all of Time Traveler's problems. Seems like it's going to be very intense, very whippy, pretty fast paced, and overall, uh, it's going to have a really good layout, and it's going to have some really great elements that are definitely going to add to, you know, the, the experience that's already insane from the spinning. Uh, with a nice layout to complement it. So yeah, I'm really excited to see this coaster open and see the full potential of the Mac Extreme Spinning Coasters. Coming in at the number 7 spot, we have Stunt Pilot at Silverwood, an RMC Raptor, and you know some enthusiasts are, are Taylor babies and they complain about everything, but I am perfectly fine with clones. I love clones, especially when they're as good as Raptors. I want to see these rides go everywhere, and I'm glad that Silverwood, a smaller park, is able to get an elite coaster. And these Raptors, they may be short rides and small rides, but they seem like they are absolutely insane. People have reported these Raptors are pulling negative 1.9 Gs in the back row, and Stunt Pilot has is going to have two extra rows in the back, so you, you're going to... You might even pull, it might be the first coaster to pull over negative 2Gs in the back row. That's just, that's just absolutely unheard of. These rides do everything great. They have insane pacing. It looks fake. The airtime is insane. The whip is insane. The, the positives are insane. Just all these coasters need uh, is length. But other than that, they pretty much nail it in almost every category. For what they have, they use that very well. And... You know, even though Stunt Pilot is going to be, it's going to be out there very far away from anything else. Pretty, pretty small ride compared to these other rides. It's going to definitely stack up to them. It's going to be one of the best rides opening this year. Just, it's going to be an insane, super intense and aggressive coaster. Coming in at the number six spot, we have Jersey Devil at Six Flags Great Adventure. The RMC T-Rex rumors were swirling around for Great Adventure because us enthusiasts exaggerate way too much. And they got an RMC Raptor. But it is still a really good ride. It's got 12 rows. The Arta Mills look insane. And this ride looks better than El Toro, so that's going to start fights in the comments. But this is this is just a step up from the original RMC Raptors, which themselves are some of the best coasters in the world. Although, you know, this is not as compact and the pacing won't be quite as good as those. This fixes the length problem and almost doubles the track length. And it's going to have lots of airtime moments. It's And it's going to have, it's going to be a very intense ride. Great inversions, great layout, and just everything you come to expect from RMC and this Raptor model. It's going to be all in this one ride. Coming in at number five, we have all speeds which is going to be a clone of Terran at Fantasia Land. And this coaster literally is all speed. It is, it is speed itself. It has defied gravity to become speed. But actually, speed is really going to be this coaster's strong suit. It's going to be one of the best pace coasters out there. Judging from how Terran is, it's going to absolutely fly through its layout. And it's going to be a long ride with tons of whippy transitions and just everything you want in a blitz coaster. A low to the ground layout uh, with really good pacing. A long ride with great transitions that just throws you around like a rag doll. And Terran is known for its great theming. And even though the theming might not be quite as good as Terran, the theming at all speeds is still going to be really good. Still going to wind around all these things. And the train is going to be insane. It looks like it should have went to El Toro. But El Toro was overrated, so it didn't go to that. Instead, it went to this insane Intamin Blitz. But this is still going to be a great ride. Sad that this isn't, it's in China because I wish it came 
somewhere near me because this ride looks like an amazing coaster. Coming in at the number four spot, we have what you get when you put together a lion and a tiger. It makes a crocodile uh, genetic engineering mutation at its fullest. And when you put together wooden steel, you get RMC and insane ejector air time. And that's the number four coaster on this list. Iron Gawazi is all about. It's going to be a really good RMC, not just focusing on only airtime. Air it's going to have great variety. It's going to have that death roll right there. It's just going to snap your neck off. And great pacing, tons of great airtime moments. You know, great first drop, outer bank. You know, great finale of nice rapid fire airtime moments. It's going to be an intense ride. Great hang time on the inversions. It's going to do everything well. And it's not the longest ride out there, but it's still got enough uh, elements to satisfy you. And it makes uh, every foot of track count. But by far the best part of the ride is going to be that twisted brake run. I mean, it's just a work of art. The measurement was amazing. It seems like they hired the same person who worked on Wicker Man's lift hill. And I mean, that the person just, they just deserve everything. They, they deserve a great Christmas present this year. And... They deserve to ride Iron Gwazi before anyone else does in 2021 because people already rode it in 2020. But yeah, Iron Gwazi, great RMC. It's going to be one of the best coasters opening the, uh, in 2021. But there is just three other coasters that are just so insane. And, and any other year, Iron Gwazi probably would have won it. And it barely lost to some of these coasters. But that just proves how good this year is. So yeah, unfortunately, Aaron Gwazi is going to have to settle with a number four spot. Despite its twisted brake runs, insaneness. But there's just so many good rides this year, guys. Coming in at the number three spot, we have Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Now, if you wanted a coaster so godly that it was five times as godly as any other coaster, and they combined the power of five gods and put them into one roller coaster well then you ride pantheon and it is so good that you even different sections of the layout are even themed to different gods and my favorite one is, is myself because i am so godly i am just an amazing person i am totally the best and i i guess i'm the whole layout but pantheon actually does have a really good layout and that's just part of what makes this ride amazing it just does everything so well it has amazing pacing it's a long ride it has great airtime great intensity positives whip hang time you name it this ride has it all and yeah you know it's definitely you know it doesn't have the most elements out of any coaster but with the elements it has every single element stands out there are no dead spots on this ride and what makes this ride why i'm even more excited for it is i'm actually going to probably be able to ride this coaster next year it's going to be one of two coasters possibly more possibly less but probably two coasters i'll be riding on this list and not only you know do i get to ride a coaster that's opening up for next year but i'm going to be riding you know the type of coaster i wanted in the u.s the most i wanted a new modern intimate blitz coaster and it's coming and i'm riding it in its opening year and i think this is going to be one of the best coasters in the world Iron Gwazi is not that much worse than this ride, and that ride is one of the best in the world. And that just shows you how good this year is and just how good of a ride Pantheon uh, will probably be. Uh, definitely really excited for this ride, especially because I'm probably going to be riding it. Great fit for the park. Definitely the park's uh, best coaster. And like I said before, I'm just so, so super excited for this coaster. Coming in at the number two spot is Abyssus at Energy Landia. Like I said, for Pantheon, I put that two spots above Iron Gwazi in my overall rankings. Spoiler, but in this, this is one spot above Pantheon, and it is in the top ten. This just looks so good. You know, we had, like, rides like Formula at the same park because Energylandia owns every single coaster, and they deserve to because they are the best park because they value credits over anything. They have two Vacoma family boomerangs. Why? Why am I talking about credits now? I I think I, I like them a little too much. But back to Abyssus. We've seen many Vekoma launch coasters before. We've seen Lek Coaster, which is just way better than all the other Vekomas. But now we have this, which isn't as good as Lek Coaster, in my opinion. 
but it's still a really good ride. You know, it's the extended version of the Shockwave model, super long ride, and it just does everything so well. Pacing, length, airtime, it's, you know, it's going to yeet you and, and yonk you like Canada Coaster Fan says, and all the, the airtime words, and it's it's going to be a really intense, whippy ride, going to have great hang time, great inversions, an amazing layout, these Vekoma layouts are just amazing, and Energy Landia keeps getting better and better, and getting more and more credits, and yeah, this is just going to be a really good coaster, pretty underrated as well, you know, most people are focusing on the American coasters because they they only care about their country, I think, but you know, this coaster is really good, better than any of the American coasters opening up, uh, in my opinion, but it is not the best coaster because we have the best coaster to ever exist and i hype it up way too much i'm the biggest fanboy of it ladies and gentlemen the best coaster opening up in 2021 is cond ah formerly known as the wallaby belgium mega coaster this is in my opinion going to be the best coaster ever built i'm way too biased to this ride and i i overhype it for everyone else i i just hype it up too much because this ride is insane if i were to just, to just design a coaster it would be this ride everything about it is just amazing it's easily going to be the best coaster for airtime in the world it has 15 airtime moments eight moments over negative one g's and it has stronger airtime than el toro this coaster just the airtime is so ridiculously insane it, there's so many varieties of airtime, off-axis, outer bank, sustain, quick pops. You even get airtime on a non-inverting Cobra roll. I mean, that's just how insane Intamin is. And airtime is only part of this ride. You have the pacing, which, you know, people literally say it's fake. I, I, I see everyone say it's fake because it's so good. And the positives, those just look absolutely insane. And the whip is so insane too. You know, all that Intamin, all those Intamin transitions. Everything about this ride is really good. It's a nice long ride. So many unique and great uh, elements. And there's some, there's so many things you just forget about this ride. Like, you know, the intensity of this ride. And, you know, so many things because of how good the airtime and the layout of this coaster is. This is as close as you can get to my dream coaster in real life. It's just, it seems like too good to be true. And even though this coaster was announced like two years ago, I'm still just, I still just can't believe this coaster actually exists because it looks fake. It is so insane. And I can, I just cannot wait for this coaster. It is just, I just can't stress it enough. It is so good looking. It's such a great ride. And that is going to be the end of this really long, two hour long video that none of you guys probably watched the whole way through. So thanks for watching if I'm actually thankful if you're sick and tired of that like button saying gray and want to make more pixels on your screen blue move your hand over to the mouse and click the button on the left while the mouse on the screen is over the like button and it will turn blue and make a like for the video and if you're a true Millennium Force Man fanboy type in the comments below onion is a hyper if not you are gp and have no brain cells according to nobody besides me and subscribe or else mr six will make every coaster at your home park a 40 free spin so anyways this video is getting way too long so i'm just leaving so see you thuzies.